In this video, we're going to have a look at how to interpret trig graphs. Example. In the sketch are the graphs of f and g for the interval 0 to 360 degrees. When interpreting graphs, it's a good idea to first study the information and the sketch before you tackle the first question. We are given that function f is a sin graph that has moved up two units. Now you need to know that the mother graph of sin starts at 0 and then has a maximum at 1 and a minimum at minus 1. After this graph has moved up two units, the new maximum will now be at 3. The y-intercept also moved up 2 to 2 and the minimum will now be at 1. Similarly, we can have a look at the blue graph, graph G. This graph has been reflected around the x-axis. It has been stretched out and moved up one unit. After the cos graph has been reflected and stretched, it will look something like this, with a maximum of 2 and a minimum of minus 2, and now this graph moves up one unit. This means its new maximum along with graph f is at 3, and its new y-intercept, which is also the minimum, is now at minus 1. On the sketch, we can see that graph G intersects the x-axis at 60 and 300 degrees, and we are given the two coordinates where the two graphs intersect. Question 1. Give the range of G. The range is all the y values, which means you read from bottom to top. The minimum value of graph G is at minus 1, and its maximum is at 3 which means the range will be all the y values from minus 1 up to 3 with minus 1 and 3 included. Next up, question 2. Determine the length of AB. Because we've already added a lot of information on the sketch, we can easily see the distance from A to B. We know that a is at 2 and b at minus 1, so the length will be 3 units. Question 3. For which values of x is graph f decreasing? Decreasing means moving down from left to right, and that happens between the two turning points for graph f. The turning points are at 90 degrees and at 270 degrees, which means it will be all the x values in between 90 and 270. Question 4. Give the amplitude of graph G. For the amplitude, we can simply have a look at the equation and know that the A value without the sign gives us the amplitude. That means that the amplitude of graph G will be 2. Question 5. Give the period of graph G. In grade 10, both the sin and cos graph have a period of 360 degrees. In grade 11, you will see how the period can also be changed by a specific transformation. Question 6. Give the values of x for which gx is equal to 0. We already know that gx means the y value, and in this case they should be 0, which means we need to get the x-intercepts. From the graph, we can see that the x-intercepts for the blue graph are at 60 and at 300, so this will be x is equal to 60, or x is equal to 300 degrees. Question B. Give the values of x for which fx is equal to gx. This means we are looking for the two x-intercepts. And these coordinates are given to us. They ask for the x values, so that will be an x of 143, or at x is equal to 270 degrees. Question C. 
determine the values of x for which fx is bigger than gx. We already know where these graphs are equal to each other. Now we're going to make use of this to form intervals and we're going to determine in which intervals graph f, the green graph, is above the blue graph, graph g. Our first interval will be all the values to the left of 143. Here, the green graph, graph f, is above the blue graph, which means it is the first interval in our answer. So our first part is all the x's between 0 and 143 degrees. The next interval is all the values between 143 and 270 degrees. Here, the blue graph is above the green graph, which is not part of our answer. Our last interval is between 270 and 360 degrees. And here, the green graph, graph F, is above again, which means it also forms part of our answer. So, our second part will be all the x's between 270 and 360 degrees.